Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we're working on the New Haven planar restoration again today, and what seems to be the, the standard thing here lately, we're doing more scraping. Uh, we got a lot of scraping to do on this machine. And the next piece I'm gonna be working on is this piece I got here on the table, and this is the uh, crossbar that goes across. It basically goes up and down the two uprights, and there's a clapper box that moves left and right on this. And what I'm gonna be working on today is getting the uh, surface that the clapper box rides on, getting all that uh, nice and flat. Now, there is some alignment issues. We're gonna have to work on this. It needs to not only be flat, but there are some surfaces behind this that go up and down on the uprights. That has to be parallel, so after we get this flat, We'll take it to the surface plate, do some testing to make sure everything's parallel, to make sure I don't need to, to change the twisting or whatever after doing some scraping. And there's also a dovetail on the front and a, and a top up here. Both of these surfaces are gonna have to be scraped in so that they are parallel to one another as well. So um, I'll make a couple of comments before I get started. First off, I, I did a little bit of making a little fixture, I guess you could say, to hold this. Uh, it's kind of an awkward piece. Uh, so I, I got some four by fours and some spacers up underneath this that it's setting on nice and flat. But I've also got it where I can flip this over because I'm gonna take it to the surface plate. We're gonna use the hoist here to pick it up, take it to the surface plate, drop it down on the surface plate. The side that's is up needs to be flipped over upside down. We'll blue it up on the surface plate bring it back over here, flip it back over, check things out, and continue the scraping process. So um, there's gonna be some heavy lifting involved in this. Uh, also, I invested in a little scissor lift table here so that I could get this to the right heights to make my scraping a little bit easier. I've been struggling a little bit on some of these parts, but they're either too high or too low, and it's just a whole lot easier on my back to have everything at the right height. So I got a little adjustable scissor lift table uh, that I can do that with now. So with that, uh, let's get in here, show you what we're starting with, and we'll start the scraping process. Get you in here looking a little bit closer. So there's basically a top piece here and a bottom piece here. These need to be scraped flat and in the same plane with one another. Uh, and we'll be able to put that on the surface plate and do it. This little section in here is actually milled down just a little bit, so it's not even coming in contact. We're just working on the tops here. Now, when I clean this up, uh, this, this actually cleaned up pretty good. Uh, similar to the uprights, there's an area about right here where the clapper box was. The ways were protected behind it. It's a lot cleaner there. But over here, uh, where it was exposed, not near the same level of pitting as we had on the uprights. There's still a little bit of pitting in there, but nothing really bad at all. I took a flat stone and went over this and just kind of checked it out. And it's, it's, there's good surface area all the way across. Had a couple of little dings in here. I'm gonna probably have to just hit those real heavy with the scraper right in here to get those down. Uh, but I think that's the only other problem I see. So anyway, I'm gonna get my Biax scraper over here, power scraper. Um, I, the, before I even take it to the plate, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and just put a cross hatch pattern on here, scraping it. And uh, then we'll take it over to the surface plate and start looking to see where we need to work on uh, to get everything in plane. So let's get at it. So we'll just start at one end and just cut across it. We got it all the way across in one direction. I'm gonna come back now, roughly 90 degrees to it, and we'll put that cross hatch in it. All right. Now let's get the top surface. Same, uh, same thing.
I just want to zoom you in here and kind of show you what we're looking at on this first pass. Really all I was trying to do is just get a pattern on here that we can now start working off of. I get a lot of questions. Why are you scraping stuff? Well, we're wanting to make it flat in the same plane. Uh, I don't know where this thing's at. I don't know this, how bad it is or anything right now. We're about to find that out when we take it to the surface plate. But I get questions. Well, why not just put it on the milling machine? I had a comment one time. Well, my face mill on my milling machine gets things plenty flat enough. Well, it depends on what your definition of flat is. And when I'm talking flat, I'm talking extremely flat, but not just perfectly flat like you get off of a surface grinder. In this case here, what you want is you want to have uh, a bunch of little areas of contact a bunch of little points of contact, but then have little valleys all around it. So I don't want a mirror finish surface. I want to have points of contact that are all on the same plane. Those high points are all on the same plane, but then you've got other areas that are a little bit lower behind it. When I'm scraping, I'm typically taking off about one, well, maybe two or three ten thousandths of an inch. Okay, so very small amounts is coming off in each pass. And what you end up with is you end up with individual bearing points, but you also have areas behind that where your oil can get and stay in there. So when these two surfaces are rubbing across one another, you have, instead of really super flat surfaces, you have points of contact, and that helps keep things from sticking together. If you take two perfectly flat pieces of metal, put them together, rub them together, put a little oil or something on them, they'll stick. You can't get them apart. We actually want to break that surface up still be flat, but break it up. And we're going to take it to the surface plate. We're going to look at where the blue transfers over from the surface plate to this piece. And that shows me where my high parts are. And I'm looking to have uniform coverage from one end to the other with a bunch of little individual points of contact. That's what you do when you're, when you're scraping ways and so forth uh, like this. So before we take it to the surface plate, I want to just hit this with a stone, all this is doing is knocking off little burrs. When we're scraping, we're raising a little burr at the end of each chip. And I'm just trying to knock those off. I'm not really trying to remove a bunch of metal. Now what I want to do is put a little contrast on this. When you start making multiple passes, it's really difficult to keep track of <coughs> where you've been if it's just <coughs> scrape metal each time. So what we do is we put a in this case, I'm putting some yellow dye on here. And that just kind of knocks the sheen down. And it lets me basically, when I come back the next pass, I can see exactly where my new scrape marks are because they'll be nice and shiny. Whereas what has been previously scraped kind of has this yellow tint to it. So it's just kind of a, to help you see, particularly in those areas that don't turn blue. And it also kind of helps you see your blue spots better. You can see it on this dull matte surface better than you can on a shiny surface. The stuff I'm using is uh, aqua wash. This is actually an ink for like artists use for uh, I think for doing uh, etching. Uh, so anyway, you can buy this stuff off the internet. Aqua wash is uh, the brand name of it. A lot of people use Canode. Back in the old days, they used Persian blue for the blue part. And they would often use red lead to actually do this uh, background here. They would use red instead of yellow. People like different colors, red and black. Some people use a red background and a black spotting ink. I actually like that as well. Uh, I've used that, done that before. But I've got my ink here and that's what we're using. All right, so next thing I want to do is I need to flip this over. So I've got my casting on these four by fours. This casting is rather heavy. Let's see if I can get around the other side. That is flipping over. There we go. Next thing I need to do is get my surface plate ready. I've already kind of cleaned it off, but I always just want to get all the dust and particles off of this. I'm just wiping it with my hand. I've already cleaned it with Windex really well. My surface plate is uh, three foot by six foot, so I've got a pretty good size surface plate for doing these larger 
parts. Again, I'm using the uh, aqua wash here. This is a, a blue. And I'm just gonna put some on the surface plate. Then I'm gonna use a little foam roller here to roll this out, get a nice thin layer on here. So give me a couple of minutes to kind of spread this out real good so that we can get a good print. All right, I think we got a nice thin layer of blue on here now. You want this to be fairly thin. You really kind of want to be able to see the granite through it, um, but you want enough on here that it'll transfer. I'm gonna bring my gantry crane in now. I've made some uh, little brackets that fit over these studs that we can lift with. Should be good right there. And carefully lower it down onto the plate, trying to keep it back just a hair, trying to keep it somewhat level as we come down. All right, we're sitting flat on here. Next thing I want to do is hinge this piece with it up here and it's all sitting on there. Ideally, if this thing is flat, it's gonna hinge about a third of the way in. So I'm just gonna move it and you look, it's hinging right here on this corner. That tells me that's my high spot on this side. And it looks like this corner here is high on this side. So it looks like we may have a little twist maybe or something going on in this. I'm not sure, but we're just gonna move this back and forth a time or two. That should transfer the blue from the surface plate to the uh, part here. Now this surface plate is a precision surface plate that's been uh, lapped. When I got it, the last certification on it, which was a couple years old, this rated a double A, which means it was flat to about 50 millionths of an inch across it. It's probably not quite that good right now, but uh, I'm pretty sure it still grades at least an A grade uh, based on some quick measurements that we did. Um, I need to get it checked out officially, but uh, it's, it's in pretty good shape. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and lift this back up and take it back over to my scraping bench. Pretty much just like we were seeing, we're sewing it was actually higher on the ends. The middle's not even touching in this case. I'm kind of touching here and here, kind of touching through here and through here. So what that's telling me now is this is showing me exactly what's high, what's low. So in scraping, what I want to do now is I want to come in here and knock down all these blue places. And that's going to lower the surface down by a couple of ten thousandths of an inch. We'll blue everything back up again, come back over, and hopefully the next time I'm going to get more coverage. It's probably going to take me a couple of passes to get uh, an even coverage from one side to the other. Uh, but this is telling me exactly what's going on as far as how flat this is. Now, I could have gone over there, and next time I go over there, what I will probably do is take a feeler gauge and see if I can put anything up underneath this and uh, see if I'm picking up, you know, give me an idea. If I got a thousandths of an inch, I got some thousandths feeler stop. Honestly, I'm seeing some, a few little marks in here. So that tells me that it's probably pretty close. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our scraper and we're just gonna hit the blue spots and uh, I'm probably gonna hit them twice. So I'll probably go in one direction and then just basically scrape right over. I'm roughing right now. We're not doing anything fine. We're just trying to get coverage. So I'll probably do two passes and uh, then we'll blow it up and do it again. So let's get uh, our scraper out and we'll go out another pass. All right, here we go. Just hit the blue spot.
I am roughing, so I'm not really paying too close attention to uh, just hitting the blue spot. So I'm trying to take down this whole end down here, really on all ends. So I'm just kind of step scraping to some extent here right now. But I'm only working in the areas that are showing blue. See, it's starting to get a little bit lighter down here. And it's not going all the way across. I'm just kind of coming across this. Now I'm going to come back and uh, go the other direction. Since I am roughing, I'm not really too worried about hitting individual blue spots at this point. I'm just trying to take this whole area down, so we're roughing. That's all there. Come down here and do this side now. Zooming in here so you can kind of see this a little bit better. You can see I'm just really kind of hitting the area that's blue. I'm not touching this yellow area because it's not touching there. I'm only knocking down this area. And you can see, hopefully you can see that cast iron jumping out in front of the scraper. We're moving metal, but it's not much. It looks like it's a lot more than it is. Probably only a couple of tenths here. I'm gonna come back the other direction now. Doing this cross hatch pattern, you kind of break that pattern up and it ends up giving you those individual points that we're trying to get to, those individual high spots and we're trying to get them fairly close together. You want probably about 15 to 20 points per square inch. All right. Let's take a brush and just knock off any of those little shavings and chips. And then we're gonna take some uh, Windex here and we're gonna clean this up, get all the ink and stuff off of this so that we can prepare to go another round. Hit this with my stones, knock those burrs off. And we'll put another coat of yellow on here. Get this ready to go over to the surface plate again. And here we go for round two. hinge it. Still showing high up in the corner there and it's moved a little bit now on this side. There we go. We're ready to take her back. Been working on getting the bottom side of this, that face, getting good contact all the way around. It was a little bit low in the middle, which makes sense because that was where the clapper box did most of its time traveling, so that was where most of the wear was. It was high on the outside. I've taken, I don't know how many passes with the scraper, basically got everything on the same plane, more or less. I've got good coverage or decent coverage all over uh, the other side of this thing as far as blue contact. It's not done by any means, I still need to work on getting points of contact, but I do have it pretty much down. Before I go to too much trouble scraping on the other side though, I wanna check, start checking some alignment because there are some things besides just getting that face flat. Uh, and in this case, it needs to be parallel uh, to these surfaces here. So we've got two surfaces here. This is the part that's gonna be riding up and down on the faces, on the uprights, on the planer. 
and basically we want to make sure that everything is parallel, that this surface is parallel to this surface, if that makes sense. So what I'm doing is I got an indicator here with the height gauge, I'm on the surface plate, and um, I've already gone in here and, and done my initial checking. Right now, I just have a thousandths indicator, and this is the highest point right here. So basically, I marked that as zero, and um, I'm just gonna sweep down through here. I know you can't see the indicator, but I'll, later on, I'll go all the way to the other side. But right now, I'm just going halfway. That's far enough for me to kind of see what's going, but I'm about three thousandths lower here. So what I'm that's telling me is, is that this front side is up a little bit higher than the back side. I also need to look out from one and the other. So I'm gonna come down here, check the same place here roughly. So that should be zero over here, over here, if it's in the same plane. And this is uh, about minus two thousandths here. And when I go down, it goes down to about minus four here. So I got a little, not quite as much taper over here. Bottom line, this is starting to tell me a story as far as what the other side's doing and what I need to do to kind of straighten it out. So what I'm gonna do when we flip this back over is I'm gonna do a process called step scraping uh, because I want to get this end lower. This end needs to be about two thousandths lower here than over here, and this whole side needs to drop down a couple of thousandths as well. I'm hoping that as I get these two points in line with one another, that the rest will start working its way out. So plan is, is and I've kind of gone in here, I've taken a Sharpie pen. Um, I know about what, how much my pass is when I go with the scraper. I'm taking three to four ten thousandths of an inch per pass, roughly. And uh, I need to take about 2,000. So I'm gonna do four passes to start with, come in here and, and check, make sure I don't go too far. And so what we'll do is we'll come in here and we will come in and scrape all the way down to about here, one pass. Then I'm gonna come all the way down to about here, then all the way down to about here, and then all the way down. So four passes, but each time I'm taking more off of this end than the other end and hopefully that's gonna start lowering things down and uh, getting it in there. So that's the game plan, let's go do it. So I think we're ready. I've kind of put some marks on here. So again, we're gonna scrape all the way down to here and then we're gonna come back and scrape all the way to here and then here, here, and here. This is my high corner and we're trying to get this in drop down. So that's the game plan, let's do it. Coming back, we're going to start about here and cross hatch back the other way. All right, this time we're coming to the start of there, so we're going to come halfway point. back from here. And go back to about here. What we should have done is we should have lowered this corner down more than the others. And of course this backside should be dropping down a little bit as well, more on this side than this side. Uh, but we gotta start somewhere. Let's clean it up. We'll take it back to the plate and uh, check it out. See if what kind of progress we made. Let's see what we got. So um, we'll come in here. This was my high spot. So we're gonna re-zero this out. That's about zero right there. 
And we were at minus three going in this direction. So I'm gonna go straight back and one, we're at about minus two and a half. So about a half a thousandth improvement going in that direction. Now let's come over to this side. And we were minus two here before, we're at minus one. So that did drop this one down about a thousandths over here. And going back, and we're still at about minus, minus four, minus three and a half, something like that. So um, looks like basically what we did, at least on the front side here, uh, we dropped this end down about a thou doing that, and I need to do that again. So we're going to do the exact same uh, game plan again here. I'll take it over there. We'll do another round of step, step scraping exactly like we just did the past time and uh, come back over and see what we got. All right, after round two of step scraping, I got my zero set here. Come on this side and yeah, it was, it's reading zero there. Depending on where I'm at on here, it's reading between zero and about a half a thou. On average, I'd say it's probably about two and a half, three tenths for right now. I'm happy with that. Um, what I want to work on next, now that I've pretty much got these two ends on the same level, next thing I want to do is, is uh, look at it in this plane. We've got this plane more or less level on this side. I don't know about the back side. We'll worry about that in a minute. But um, what I want to look at now is about how high or low uh, the other side is. So I'm going to go back and tell you what, let me do that again. I bumped it. I'm going to have to re zero it. All right, so we're dropping off still about 3,000 to about the halfway point on this side. Let's see what this side looks like. Okay, so about the same, about 3,000 to the middle. It's dropping off, so, and it is going downhill. So again, this side is high. So uh, looks like what I need to do now is uh, just really take this whole side that we've been working on, it needs to drop down a little bit. Um, so we're going to have to do some more scraping on this side to do that. And since we've got things pretty much level, um, I'm probably just going to take four or five passes, just back and forth crosses all the way across this time. And we'll bring it back over here and do some more inspecting. Well guys, I think we're going to call this a wrap for now. Uh, we've got the two front ends on the same plane and I've been doing some thinking. I think I'm going to change my strategy a little bit and uh, we're going to take that up in the next video on uh, how we're going to go out, go about doing the, the rest of this, getting these sides parallel with one another. Uh, but we've made a lot of progress. Uh, the, the front side or the, the bottom here, I think is uh, really probably good enough. I'm gonna, after we get totally through, I'm going to go in there and touch it up a little bit, but I got good coverage all the way across. It's nice and flat. We're making progress on getting these sides up parallel. So uh, we'll be continuing this uh, scraping episode in uh, another upcoming episode down the road, uh, but we're moving right along. As always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Please leave comments if you like, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and follow us along on the restoration of this early or late 1800s vintage metal planer. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.